The Z to Z Podcast. Good morning, good evening, or good day, and welcome to the Z to Z Podcast, the home for Xbox achievement hunters and gamers for junkies. I'm your host, Brandon Freeman. Thank you so much for listening. At Z to Z, we love gaming and in particular, grabbing achievements and gaining gamer score. We do news, reviews, and interviews. It's about achievements, we'll unlock it. You can find show notes for this show as well as previous shows on our website, Z to Z.com. This is episode 146. You can also contact us with questions and comments on Twitter at Z-E-D-T-O-Z-E-D, or at our forums, forum.zdz.com, or email us directly, contact at zdz.com. So we're going to get this show started with uh, with Prue and I. How are you doing, Prue? I'm doing fantastic this week. How are you doing, Prue? Wonderful. Wonderful. We've only got four after to this show, only four more. So you, now that you're listening to the beginning, I guess there's five total. Uh, so before we end this, uh, this run, this awesome run that we've had, um, but, uh, it's, it's going well. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we were supposed to have a guest tonight. He may still come in as of recording. So it'll be exciting, uh, a surprise for all of us. Uh, but we're going to get started with Prue and I talking about what we've been up to this week. And so I'm going to kick it over to you, Prue. What, uh, what are you, how's your just for fun been? Have you, uh, have you enjoyed yourself? It's been fantastic. In fact, I've done two whole achievements in my Just for Fun. Do you want to know what they are? Two achievements. Huh? Are you winning 2-0? I am now winning 2-0. I have Atta no- boy. I, I got one uh, day one on Saturday, mm-hmm. and then I got the second one just a few hours ago. <laughs> fantastic. So, are, are all of yours, like, really that hard? Um, no, no. Well, so some just- of them. Some of them You're just are. lazy. Uh, none of them are really motivating me. There's there is one that I specifically wanted to get, and I tried to yep. go for it a few times, and it just didn't work out. Uh, there was one in, um, in fact, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which I've talked plenty about on the show here. That basically all you had to do is leave your system idle for. Yep. Well, the problem is I don't know any good way to leave uh, Xbox One controllers idle. I, because I tell like I I did all the tricks right I I I you know, plugged them in I I taped oh, the control yeah. stick to one side I, like other I pressed the button in like you actually have to change your inputs at some point oh, otherwise it just goes and cuts idle and no, it's no, like, well have you gone into your settings and changed your like console sleep settings no 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 so it doesn't go to sleep it doesn't go to sleep mode it goes into that like half your screen gets filled up with these notifications oh, mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. And I oh, couldn't... Oh, so that, that, that triggers the game to pause? Yes, it triggers oh, that. Oh, bummer. Yeah, and it's like a two to three hour achievement, but it's it can be entirely idled if you have a way to do it, and I don't have any, like, I don't have any of the turbo controllers or anything like that. Yeah. So I tried a couple of times, and I just kept getting frustrated. And fr- I, I wanted to get the achievement because it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of points. It's good TA. I want to get that game done. But every time mm-hmm. I tried, you know, every time I'd walk away for more than 30 minutes, it would just go into that sort of idle mode. Yeah. And I couldn't so, get it. OK, so when I when I said that you're lazy, uh, I take that back. Your list sucks. Yeah, my list always sucks, man. This thing is a monster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's not fun. I think this has kind of been part of the part for the course, and I think that the the longer I focus on pairing my you know achievement my completion percentage uh, as you know you know I, I, I'm working on that. Yeah, it's just going to be harder and harder for me. Um, but okay, so you're you have a one point three eight achievement, mm-hmm. and then you got a one six one and a one seven two. Okay, so at one seven two, uh, so you have two achievements below a one seven two. I have um, six achievements at or above 172. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that is a 171, a 172, a 181, a 20, a 26, and then I have the two Rocket League title update ones, <laughs> which are three and four respectively, but they're not real three and fours. No, Those are like no, no. 10 minutes of work three or fours. Yeah, if so. if if you really wanted to know just how good my list is, it ends with seriously 3.0. Yeah, and so. then the other one is the fully upgraded chariot and in that chariot thing, 
Uh, this is yeah, this is a monster. Yeah. So I, I knew I wasn't going to get a lot, but like I said, I, I did one right away, and then uh, and I knew my opponent was probably going to be in a, a pudding. Yeah. So I did one in Star Wars: The Force Unleashed two, which was fun. That I I love. I really like those games. They're really yeah, yeah. fun to go back to and stuff. Uh, and then I've just, I've been doing other stuff this week. So, and I knew I didn't really have, there's no pressure. Uh, and then I got one tonight in Halo Wars. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I'm ready for a new list, but I think i am resigned to the fact that I'm just going to, I'm just going to get a handful every time for every list. And I think I should and be you, okay. You haven't that. curated anything, right? Yeah, absolutely this... nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is full on. This is everything. just games I've played. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but that's fine. That's fine. It is just for fun and it motivated me to go back and play these yeah, two games this randoms. week. Yeah. And, and maybe next week I'll have a good solid list and that will give me motivation to play five different games. You know, who knows, but <laughs> right. Right. Uh, yeah. So we will, we will see. Uh, mine, mine kind of did the same thing. Like, cause I, I'm only up four to one right now and it, but cause I got to look at the ones that are there and like, like I keep getting the life is strange before the storm ones, and it's like get the optional graffitis, and it's like, eh, yeah, but like I, I want to sit and enjoy that game. Like I don't want to just run in and go grab some graffiti. Like I want to just sit down and play through the story. And so it's like eh, I'll just let that one slide. I, I'm not, I don't want to do that, um, you know. Or or the little acre, which is like a one to two hour completion. It's like, okay, do I want to use that now? Like uh, I'll just wait on it. So I ended up. I, I did a quick one in Brave and in Horse Racing 2016, Ooh. my friends. Boy, that is a just a gem of a game. Isn't yeah, it? that was oh, you had a good time shit. with that. You didn't even finish it yet, have you? Oh gosh, no! I've got two achievements. <laughs> I, 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 I won my first race and I finished the first five levels of the first season. Uh, that's it. I'm I'm not. I'm. I'll. I, this is perfect fodder for like and it's just, it's great because i don't have a lot of games that i am I'm actively playing for h letters h um i do need to go back and play the halos and stuff but like it's nice to just have a kind of one-offs uh to just get a single achievement in but i feel like that uh, is this in games pass is that how i'm playing it no there's no way it was in games pass okay i doubt whatever Anyway, um, <laughs> dude, this, this is just that game is awful. Are you ready and for two to three more hours of it? I hope you are. I, I know it's and I'm not good at that starting mini game. Oh, um, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's like critical to winning some of those later things. Uh, I just I don't it, it like freaks me out because it just they're, they're, the lights are standing on either side. And then all of a sudden they like whoosh, and they just zoom right across the book. And it's like I'm always caught off guard by it. It's like I know it's coming. It's like in a, a, a horror movie when you know there's a jump scare behind the door. And you're just like, don't open the door. This, this, you're going to get jump scared. You're going to get jump scared. <laughs> don't. And, you know, it, it happens every time. Even though you tell yourself it's going to happen. It still, still freaks you out. Um, so anyway, I got that. And then I did uh, Dad Beat Dads, a little dual controller how, how is that because i have that game and it's one of those games i'm always like uh is is this easy enough to just get done real quick yeah. or is it yeah. i mean it still takes some time because there's like you gotta you gotta play like a hundred games of a certain you know this game mode or you gotta you gotta do this and so there's some grindy stuff if you're just playing by yourself um it's actually i mean i've played with my son and his friends and i had it's like a you know just a, f a fun four player single screen arena battle uh where you throw babies at each other and take the other guy's baby <laughs> and run into a door with it and stuff i mean there's a bunch of different variations but so like, like i had the neighborhood kids over once and we had four controllers going and there's one where you um you can like throw things and to try to hit the other the, the, the baby off your dad's back and so, like, we were just whipping cinder blocks and skulls all over the place. And, like, that was just a hoot. And, and you know, it was, so we were having fun playing, like, legitimately. But uh, as far as achievements go, yeah, just dual dual controller, super simple to get most of them. Uh, it's just that other stuff is just going to be grindy. And so, yeah. you know, if you had a group of people, like, um, you could have a ton of fun with it. It is a, it is a genuinely fun game and very small, you know, like tidbits. It's like, hey, you know, I got some buddies over. Uh, you know, let's play this game for 15 minutes, and you'll have 15 minutes worth of fun. And then you're like, okay, let's let's do something else for 50. You know, and just jump from game to game if that you were so inclined. Um, but as a solo completion, I think the eight to ten hours is 
about right. Okay. Uh, so those three were my kind of just get in and dabble uh, games. Uh, but I did I did play one way more significantly because I saw it on my list and um, I looked at the that the the guide on TrueAchievements.com and it said that this like every dungeon has one of these mystery cubes, so you just have to do it. It's like great, you know, this should be pretty quick. And you know, I've kind of wanted to go back to this game. The game is Battle Chasers Night War. Um, it is uh, it is a game I kickstarted, and so I got it back in last December. It is a turn-based um, RPG, and and this game is like I really like it. the art style is super cool. It's X Vigil guys, the guys who did Darksiders. Um, oh, okay. One of, the, one of the artists on that, he went to this this new studio and did the artwork for this game, and uh, and so there's a lot of like the game blew up way bigger than its Kickstarter plans were. Like, they just kept adding to it and adding to it, and, like, scope creep really got out of control, and uh, so it was delayed a whole bunch of times, like every Kickstarter ever is. Uh, and so finally it came out, and it's actually it's actually really fun if you like turn-based RPGs. It's, you know, you're very, um, you know, traditional turn-based battle system. You've got your three characters on the left side, your enemies on the right side. Um, there's, charge, you know, charging attacks. There's quick attacks. It's, uh, you know, it shows the order in which, you know, who's going to act next and then whatever ability you're going to use, if that moves you down the order of actions and things. Um, but what's what's really great about this is it's a perfect streaming game because I can sit with my laptop on these turn-based battles and I can watch TV. And, you know, because I don't have to, like, be staring at my computer reacting to everything. Because it just it's inherently has pauses during every single stop. So I've been watching. Uh, I watched a bunch of football, um, you know, doing – watched some movies, some TV while I was going through for this achievement. And then, uh, you know, I ended up – it took me a lot longer than I thought it would. I probably spent another two or three hours playing this game, uh, getting deeper into the story. But it was cool. Like I – I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I, I put this thing down, uh, and I'm going to end up putting it down again because I find it very hard to believe that I will be matched up again with somebody uh, who has this game. This isn't wasn't necessarily super popular, but uh, actually, I should see how many people in TA. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. it. But it's super fun. Thirty five hundred gamers. Um, have That's this not game. bad. No, it's actually a decent, decent on on site, decent quantity. Uh, it's got a nice rating, four point three out of five. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's it's really cool. It's it's a lot hmm. of fun. So if you're interested in turn-based uh, battles, it's uh, oh boy, ha, <laughs> yeah. I was way further ahead in this game than my uh, my opponent here. <laughs> that is helpful. Uh, yes, it's super helpful. Oh, I didn't know I did that. Anyway, uh, cool. So yeah, if uh, that I, I highly recommend that game. I feel uh, if you're so inclined. Uh, what else you been up to, Prue? Uh, a few other things, you know, we talked about this last week, Freem, and I completed Quantum Break. Oh, yeah, that's right. How'd you find that boss battle? So I played it, I'd say probably five times on my own, and I got a little frustrated, so I just looked, yeah. just, you know, a little frustrated. That's five times is pretty, pretty reasonable. I looked it up, and the first tip that I saw was there's an automatic shotgun somewhere okay. in, the, in, the, in that boss arena. Yeah. Grab that and use that. And I think I beat it my second try after that. Huh. Because I'd never used shotguns in the entire game up, up yeah. to that point. So I don't think I played with the shotgun when I when I beat it. Yeah. I literally mostly just used the pistol because it had infinite ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably seven or eight tries and I got it done. So it, um, you know, I, I guess my overall impressions are, are no different than what I talked about last week. It's fine it's <laughs> decent yeah it's okay uh they teased a sequel which uh I would not expect to see nope well it's called control control yeah didn't you see that other remedy game coming out with the one uh courtney hope the the girl from the game what she's the main character in the new remedy you you don't remember of this from e3 no i don't at all are Wait, you they're serious con- they're continuing this story no, it's uh, okay. it, it is not Quantum Break Two. It's a different story, but okay. it does have that telekinetic time bending powers. Uh, they 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 you can when you watch the control trailer, you're like, wow, that 
I can see all the tech that they pulled from Quantum Break to make this game. Yeah. Uh, because it, it shares a lot in common with that. I think I think Remedy's kind of positioning it as a hybrid Alan Wake meets Quantum Break. Um, you know, where they got that kind of creepy vibe going with some of the cool uh, effects and powers that they developed for Quantum Break. Yeah. Okay. It looks awesome. I think I, I, I'd be, I'm really interested in that game. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I guess we'll see what happens. But I don't expect Quantum Break two anytime ever. Oh gosh, no. Um, I also unless of course Microsoft buys Remedy. Uh, even then, I I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also started and completed Loco Cycle. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was. How long did that take you to do? Uh. Eh, three four hours five okay. five maybe I, I i don't really know it was over it was like over maybe a couple of evenings um which is interesting because i uh haven't played i hadn't played it obviously mm -hmm. but it was uh, a twisted pixel game and i love twisted pixel one of my favorite developers um you know from the maw on up through the explosion mans and right and beyond uh and their their signature silliness is certainly on display in this game <laughs> uh i really appreciated the i mean the game is so stupid but I, I liked i liked the the effort they put in for the you know the actual visuals of the um of the actual the film stuff that they did you know with right. the live action thank you i couldn't think of the word live action uh the live action stuff that they did and uh i mean the game is okay yeah but it's it's just full of character and flavor, just like all twisted, kind of all twisted. Well, I don't know. The Explosion Man games are actually really great platformers. Right. Uh, whereas this game is more like the gameplay is mediocre, but it's got this sort of that flavor to it. Sure. Um, and it didn't overstay its welcome. It's it's relatively short. So, I, man, I don't, what are they up to these days? I have no idea what they've done. They just did uh, Wilson's Heart for the VR. They just finished. Um, that shipped last year, I think. So they're likely working on something new now, but they're probably early, early in development on it. Huh? Was that the, the next game they did after Local Cycle? Wilson's Heart. Yeah. yeah Am I so. missing anything? Like that's the chain of events. It was. Yeah. They 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 well they left they left Microsoft right um to go independent and then they I think they just started working on VR. Oh, huh, that's too bad. Yeah. They're they're a, a great developer. I really really enjoyed a lot of their games, and even Local Cycle here. Like I said, where the gameplay was mostly mediocre, but it was elevated by the silly story and situations that you you were kind of brought into. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how it goes, I suppose. Um, you know, Free, and this is a, a good PSA for anybody out there who is listening to this early on when we release it. Conan Exiles is yes. free this week. So you have, yeah. if you're listening to this on day of is release... Is it just this week, or is it because it's leaving Games Pass, or what's the... I don't know. I don't know that they've released the rationale behind it, but it was from the, uh, the 17th, I think, to the 24th. It was basically the whole week. It was Thursday to Thursday, if, if okay. memory serves me. Um, those dates might be slightly off, but it's very close. So if you're listening to this on release day, on Monday, you have two or three more days to do this, which is well enough time to get this game done. It took me maybe an hour, close to that hour fifteen. Yeah. Um, and I was distracted a lot. I had you know kept jumping in and out. I had to take the dog out and all this sort of stuff. Uh, follow any guide you can find. There's video guides. There's text guides. It's easy, easy, easy stuff to do, and you can get it done. Especially if you have either a boosting partner or a second account that you can use, you can get this done that quick, and it's free. Uh, yeah, it's a free to play weekend. Yeah, yeah. So I did that because, hey, why not, right? Yeah, I'm totally gonna do that too. Yeah, get on it, free. Get on it, free. Uh, let's see. I did uh, real quick. I played some Red Dead for you, not UHH, for a random to do list. Oh yeah, yeah, man. That that was fun. That was cool to go back to that. With, and it's which uh, would you end up doing in there? Uh, that co-op stuff. No, some gambling. no, single player. I had to do all the strangers missions. Who's the stranger? So the the, the oh, strangers, the, yeah, like all the, the strangers. It's basically yep. the miscellaneous quests yep. with all the weird yep. people. Yep. Um, 
which is Those are, they're so quirky. Yeah, yeah. It's that's exactly like Rockstar flavor to that yeah. game. You know, uh, but man, does that game look good? Whew. Still, so I'm I'm hyped. I'm really hyped about this week, this Friday, uh, a week from uh, recording right now. I'm gonna hop right on the Red Dead train and start right away. And uh, see what kind of damage I can do. Uh, so I'm looking forward to Red Dead 2. But other than what that, are you, I, what are you uh, are you doing Red Dead 2? Like, is that what you just said? You're oh yeah yeah no no I'm is it preloaded? Oh no no free. Okay. I'm gonna buy the disc or oh that's right. As rumors have it, the two discs. I've been seeing some uh, reports on what that download size is. That's pretty big yeah uh it, yeah the, the download is nothing to me my, i have fast internet so it, does, it doesn't even matter if i buy it or or uh buy it digitally or physically to me it's like yeah you kind of have to get it either way mm-hmm. but i'm excited i'm very excited about the game i'm really hyped there's like it four looks just wild yeah it looks are you gonna get it yeah I, I don't know what's realistic in time in terms of like actually buying and playing it i absolutely will but it's like the same thing with like the witcher like i need to play the witcher 3 i own it yeah. i have the complete mm-hmm. edition but like it's god it's so big like what what am i gonna when am i just gonna sit down and just focus like do i want to what i don't know it, it, it's, it'll be after this podcast ends um and so <laughs> nobody fair. will hear about my rdr2 uh, endeavors um yeah so other than that i've been playing one other game which is called ninjin clash of carrots have you heard of this game free i have not yeah so that this sounds is, crazy it's eh, it's not crazy it's a smaller game i'm doing this for for review purposes and it's a 2d beat-em-up side scroller essentially okay. um you could say that it's mixed with infinite runner but that's more of an aesthetic thing than a gameplay thing like okay it's hard to describe you're just essentially running the whole time but you can still you still have the freedom of movement from you know the z and the x axis or sorry the x and the y axis um and it's just a it's just a cutesy clever not clever cutesy pretty fun beat em up I'd say it's it's hmm. actually a solid little game where you play as a rabbit, a ninja rabbit, trying to get all your carrots back to your village. Right. And uh, yeah, that's about it. There's not really too much more to go into. Uh, I've only done a, a little bit into it now, but uh, uh, and it's a decent little game for sure. Uh, you know, not terrible at all. Uh, so that's what, what it I, cost. Uh, I think the, re- the the retail price is fifteen dollars, but right now it's on sale for eleven. I want to say. Um, I'd probably say worth 11 for sure, but I have to, I've got to get further into it. I'm only probably 50% of the way through. So, Mm -hmm. uh, that's the rest of my stuff. What about you? I only had one other thing. Uh, well, two other things, but, uh, one isn't giving me any achievements. It, uh, the one that's not is I'm still doing Battleborn. Uh, I am idling Battleborn. I need to get to level 100 and I'm at level 86 right now. Uh, so my console times out after like, you get kicked out after 100 minutes. Um, so the, the, and I think we've talked about this before, but the dumb thing with that game is that you get experience simply for how long you play the game um, or how long you're in a game. And so if you just let the server time out and, you know, idle there, you get a good chunk of experience for literally doing nothing. Now, granted, you can make it go faster by completing quests and doing things, like actively playing the game. You can get more experience, but it's on par with, like, what you're getting by just idling. So, you know, you could double it by working really hard, or I could just let it sit there for 100 minutes and do nothing. So, like, I get home from work, and I turn it on, and then I go to the gym, and then I get back from the gym... And I reload a, a, a game, and then I go take a shower and have dinner. And then after that, I reload another game. We get the kids to bed, and then we watch TV with the wife, come down, and then I, I play my actual gaming for the evening. So, you know, I get three rounds, and each round gives me a pretty much a level up. So, you know, I started at level 54 at uh, the beginning of October. And uh, so I've gone up, you know, 30-some levels. And obviously I'm not doing three per night, and I'm not doing... but it's simple. It's so easy. And I saw so I'm getting this done before the end of the month for my random to-do list. 
Um, and, uh, and I'm, you know, definitely putting my, and so this is why, cause, cause my screen goes to that idle screen that you, you have, but it doesn't pause you out of the game. So like I have my controller hardwired in, I turned off my automatic sleep and I deftly tilt my, I use my TV remote resting on my mantle to just gently, gently push the stick backwards. So I'm, I'm walking backwards very slowly so that there's an input, you know, uh, but I don't want stick drift. So it's like, I'm very gentle with, uh, how, you know, like no rubber bands. That's, 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 that's gross. You're, you're hurting <laughs> your controller, Prue. That being said, you already put yours in an oven. So I guess what worse can go. Oh, go come on. Come on now. <laughs> so that I've been doing that. And then I've been playing a ton of bingo, yeah, uh, Microsoft Bingo. I'm halfway done. I got, uh, well, okay. No, you're I'm, not. I'm halfway through the achievements. I've got <laughs> 10 out of 20, um, but I'm only at level 12 of 46. Yeah, you Oof. know, got to get to level 46. Now, does the do the levels? Like, do you need more experience per level as you go, or is it kind of an? E- does it seem like it's an even amount? It seems like it's evenly increasing. It's not like like a logarithmic increase, like a lot of uh, okay. games are. Um, but it definitely seems like it gets m- at least slightly more every time. So like I've hit level 30. Yeah. And I would say I feel t- two thirds done of the game with the leveling okay. of the game. Cause you have to get to level 47, I think, or 46 or something like that. 46. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's yeah. At level 12, you're, you're like 20% done of the game. Yeah, and so it's, okay. You know, that, since you're at level thirty, you've you've unlocked the ability to play with a lot more bingo cards. What do you typically run when you do your? Do you do you throw out like eight to ten cards out there? Well, here's the thing. I'm playing on a very tiny old Windows eight phone. Oh, okay. And it can only actually display two cards at the same time. <laughs> sure. So. Even four cards is intensive, like how much more attention you have to give it because oh, you yeah. have to swap screens. You have to press the down arrow, the up arrow. Oh, so gotcha. I can do four at most, okay. but I but I I've heard from other people um, and talking with people like the most cards that you can get, the better, the more you can pay attention yeah. and actively work on it, the better off you are. Yeah. Um, and because I think as it stands, so I've unlocked six. And I can fit six on my screen pretty well, but six is the limit of how fast I can move with the trackpad and keep up with the the daubing. Mm-hmm. Um, any fast, any more cards, and I don't, I don't think I can maintain my my cursor speed fast enough. Now, maybe if I had my external mouse, I could, but even that seems a bit much. And this all of a sudden, then it's like, okay. Now it's your cost benefit. Okay, how much more experience am I getting with more cards versus having to auto dob, uh, you know, two or three cards for you know ten to twenty bucks or whatever. Yeah. Um. You know. So do you do you do you put on, uh, nine cards and have your top three auto go and then you just have to focus on six? I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that yet because ultimately you still have to spend ten grand. How much have you spent so far? Do you have that achievement? The ten grand achievement. Yep, I do. Okay, so the only thing you're missing is that level uh, level forty six to the playing each level in a row. Uh, that one and the one for unlocking three different regions entire oh, the collection collection yeah, yeah whatever. Um, and that's only because I assume that will come with time because obviously the higher in levels you go, the longer time you're going to be spent on each level between when you unlock a new level. Yeah, if the if indeed the levels are spreading out as they are, because yeah. I haven't felt like between between level one and level twelve, I don't feel like the experience, the rate of experience has been any different. Like I feel like I'm gaining a level every four or five games or whatever. Oh no! Oh no! No no! That so will that gets slow much worse. Way down. Yeah. Like <laughs> I've been level thirty probably, and I play it very inconsistently. Like there are yeah. there are weeks I'll go where I'll play it like five days a week. Um, right. you know, before bed or whatever, or there are days, you know, there are weeks I'll go that I won't play it at all. But, um, I would say that there, I, I've been on level 30 for, oh Quite God, some time. 
Yeah, close to a month okay. for sure. So, Bummer. yeah, and uh, it discourages me, honestly. I, I, that's why I kind of don't play it as much because it's like to get over that hump to 46, that seems like... Seems it's daunting. It seems really daunting. I, I'm Can sure it's doable. But buy your way. <laughs> I I don't know what. I mean the. I don't know what even the best path would be to buy your way to a higher level. I guess it would be, the. Uh, I, I I don't even know. Power. I don't I know. I guess power ups would be the way I would go. Power ups would would help certainly. Well, because because there is those some of those power ups are double coins, double tickets. So, like, you can get double XP in there. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've i never been even tempted to spend any money, but yeah. it's... Uh, I, I'm very excited for the day that I actually get it done, because that's three completions. I started with the Windows Phone 8, and you... Hopefully, with, an, with you know, barring any sort of malfunctions, it should carry across. And I yeah. should get the two other achie- uh, completions as well, but... For sure. It's a... That's a... I would say it's a bigger ask than Solitaire uh, or even Mahjong that I've seen so far. I, yeah. Oh, I, I think so too. Just because you have to be so invested. Like the most, a lot of the ones you can get daily on. And then, you know, by the time you're done with that, if you just spend an extra hour or two on those other Microsoft games, you should be able to get most of the. Mahjong's pretty in depth though. Um, having to go through quite a bit of story quote-unquote story you know the progression of the levels to get to unlock the ones you need and even minesweeper that adventure mode that thing sucks i haven't Uh, done minesweeper yeah it is stupid i do not like it and i hastily like you have to get to level 20 and i got to level 18 and i was just uh i i was just being careless and i blew up and i have to start all over again no like it is just dumb. Uh, I am uh, seven of my twelve months into uh, most of these games, um, getting the years done. So I'm halfway, halfway on getting my my the daily ones completed for that. Have you that done the uh, jackpot one? No, that's the uh, the other one that I hear is pretty daunting. I I haven't touched it yet, but okay, I'll keep my eye out for that. Oh, and that, that reminds me, it's a call to action. So if you anybody out there who's been playing bingo, uh, send me send me treats, send me prizes, send me keys. Um, hey, me just, too, because I just <laughs> found out that was a thing. Freem told me tonight. I had no idea. I've been playing this game for months and months and months. And he's like, oh, I sent you a thing. Why don't you send me a thing? And I didn't even notice that that was an option on the main screen. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so if you're going to send it, oh, you can just apparently send it to everybody on your list. So, yeah. yeah so I feel like I feel like I should explain that, because if you didn't realize then because like on my so on the laptop here and maybe maybe it's different on the phone, but right underneath all the destinations, there's these gold boxes. One says the shop, one says social and then leaderboard. And if you click on the social right on the top, there it says, hey, help your friends out by sending them gifts. And so every 24 hours, you can send gifts and power keys and power ups to your buddies. And there's, there's a simple checkbox on there, and you can sit like so. You know, I think like I just sent Chin Doctor and Fug and like all these people have been sending gifts, and I'm, I guarantee most of them are already done with the completion. Um, but you know, hey, share the wealth, everybody. Let's let's you know get those keys and some power ups going. Help uh, help a brother out. Um, anyway, you know, Freem, I send you a, a poker gift every day. So this, just yeah. could, this could just be part of my routine as well now. So my, and I feel bad because like I, I have a decent amount of friends on Pokemon go right now and, but I, I can't get to enough Pokestops to get gifts in return. <laughs> right. And so like, <laughs> I, I always leave people's gifts hanging and then, like, whoever was, like, two-plus days old, it's, like, they're on the top of my priority list to send a gift, you know, open their gift and then send a gift back. And so, like, I always try to keep one, you keep them sitting there with gifts. So it's like, oh, hey, I owe them a present. I don't want to collect and then not dish back. <laughs> so that's why all of your gifts are hanging out there, uh, everybody. I got to um, tell you, Freem, and this is a perfect time to talk about it, my Switch hype is is approaching level eleven at this point. It's, it's at a almost is at a maximum. Oh uh, man, I I uh, I mean, like I'm gonna get my switch and then Pokemon. Let's go the week after, but 
I I am getting unreasonably hyped and excited for Smash. I just I get this way every time Smash comes out, but I just sure. I'm becoming obsessive, and it's it's not good. And I, but I'm just I cannot wait. Have you been enjoying the the Gen Four Pokemon that are out there? Oh, I'm the so I, I yeah I'm so pumped. I love the injection of the new Pokemon in this game. It really motivates you to play it again, you know. And I and I I like the slow burn sort of. Here are ten Pokemon this week, and then next week there's going to be ten more Pokemon. I I really like the yeah. way that they roll them out. Uh, because it really keeps you invested and motivated to, to totally keep agree. logging in. So and and they've been modifying like the the appearance rates. You're know, like, cause you know what? A couple weeks ago it was, hey, it's Psychic Pokemon Week, and so yep. it's like, oh, good. Like I can I I finally got my Alakazam because I was catching enough Abras to to evolve him. And you know, one the other time, like, like Community Days come around. Yep. What is Community Day on uh, what uh, Sunday? Beldum. Yep. Uh, yeah, Beldum. Who like evolves I've caught one of them? Who evolves into one of my favorite Pokemon? Uh, probably Metagross. my favorite pedig- Pokemon is Metagross. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it's uh, it's a full fledged game now for sure. And so it's re- I'm really excited about uh, Pokemon Let's Go as well. So we can get all that sort of integration, but uh, we don't need to go too far into that because no. that's not no. what we do. The only the other thing I've been doing this week is uh, so there's a game that jumped out on Games Pass this uh, this week, um, and it was uh, Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption, and I had heard this was a boss a boss rush a boss battles. And and so I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I'm interested because it's free. It's on games. Well, free on Games Pass. Um, and it, it, it just came out. Games launching right now. And uh, and so I thought, you know, I'm going to kind of watch this on Mixer and it'll be on True Achievements Mixer on Thursday. It looks like uh, after this releases. So Thursday, the 25th, um, it, it rem- it's, it's a cross between uh, my, uh, the what did I say two worlds. Uh, monster hunt or hunt boss hunt whatever the hell that one stupid game is it was a mobile game super easy completion um two worlds hunting boss that's the one it rem- it's that mixed with dark souls uh it has a very dark gothic feel to it and stuff and it is a series of boss battles uh big significant boss battles who will kick the crap out of you so you end up doing a ton of rolling and dodging and all this stuff 61 achievements we were just talking about that Prue and i that that's a ton of achievements now it is getting two and a half out of five stars uh out of the 10 people who voted and from what i watched it's i mean it's not great uh it's it's interesting it's cool some of the boss designs are interesting and cool like i've enjoyed watching it on mixer i don't know if i want to play it i kind of want to play it but I'm not good at Dark Souls, so like I, <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's gonna end well for me. Um, but it's it's free, so I'm I'm kind of torn. I feel like I should give it a try. What about you? Are you interested at all? You do you don't like Dark Souls, do you? Uh, no, I don't, I don't. I don't really either. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Yeah, I don't think I really like punishing for punishing's sake. And I'm oh. sure there are plenty of people who say that's not the case but Kush Moose has played it and has 21 out of 61 achievements look at that I can't see if he's beat it yet or not because like I watched I think I watched a dude beat it because I think there's so only she like said. 7 or 9 bosses or something anyway so I've been kind of poking around in that too but uh, that's about it for me. Do you have anything else that you want to touch on for gaming wise? No, no. Uh, other than we're coming into we're uh, man, we're about to cr- we're about to turn a corner. Is what I've been meaning to say. There, we are going to hit Red Dead Two next week. Oh yeah. Um, Fallout seventy six is in the near future. Uh, Call of Duty just came out. Uh, not that I care about that, but, uh, you know, it's we're right in starting to get into prime time of the triple A's for this year. So, it's, oh, yeah, uh, it's an interesting place to be. Uh, I'm hyped for a few games this season, which I haven't been for a while. It feels like <clears throat> it's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's get into some news. And I think we should start with the with the bad news first. Um, the co-founder of Microsoft, Paul Allen, has passed away uh, at the age of 65. Uh, he's been he was battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for a while, and uh, and apparently there's some complications, and that's what ultimately led to his death. 
Um, it's you know, nasty. Yeah, it's it's a huge bummer. Uh, and so he, with Bill Gates, founded the company in 1975, and uh, they he ended up leaving in in '83 uh, when he got this disease. So he's he's had Hodgkin's and lymphoma for um, for a, for a while, uh, but it, it it sounds like it came back. I'm trying to see when maybe this uh, re you know, flare up's not the right word, but anyway, coming uh, out so of remission. Yeah, su- yeah, super super sad news here. Uh, there's an interesting um, quote from Satya Nadella. The, obviously, he's the current CEO of Microsoft. If you weren't aware. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just read his statement here. Uh, Paul Allen's contributions to our company, our industry, and to our community are indispensable. As co-founder of Microsoft, in his own quiet and persistent way, he created magical products, experiences, and institutions. And in doing so, he changed the world. I have learned so much from him. His inquisitiveness, curiosity, and push for higher standards is something that will continue to inspire me and all of us at Microsoft. Our hearts are with Paul's family and loved ones. Rest in peace. Uh, so very sad, uh, sad news in that regard. Um, you know, again, our thoughts and prayers are with the Allen family and, uh, you know, the, the people at Microsoft. So that's a huge bummer. Um, but, but it's, it's important. Uh, so let's talk about stuff that's not important because, you know, that's how I like to deal with, uh, with sad news is I like to make jokes and, and have fun. And so, uh, this is this is achievement related, but it's not Xbox achievement related. Um, those of you uh, who are familiar with the game The Stanley Parable, this is uh, this was a very well liked PC game. It was super interesting. People, um, you know, anytime you you say like, "Hey, what's an indie game that that I should try out?" People tend to point this one out to me as something that I should should give a shot. Now I don't because it's it's Steam only. I'm not I'm not a, or well it's PC only and I'm not a PC gamer. But they uh they have a a series of really strange achievements in here. There's only 10 of them. 10 achievements um which again, you know, Steam achievements whatever. <laughs> um and uh, and and it seems like so I've been kind of going through this list, and uh, like there's this one called commitment, and you have to play the Stanley Parable for the entire duration of a Tuesday, which means you have to start it before midnight on Monday, and then let your game run for 24 consecutive hours to unlock this achievement. Um, now, granted, you can change your clock. But you still have to let it run for 24 consecutive hours to get this achievement to go. Like, that's just silly. <laughs> um, but kind of clever. Uh, it, it, sure. Kind of clever. Sure. There's, a, there's one called You Can't Jump. And then the, the flavor text says, no, seriously, we disabled it. Uh, and so if you apparently you uh, go in there and you try to hit the space bar, which is traditionally the jump button. And you get an achievement for it, and it says, "Yeah, you know, there's no jumping in this game. Doesn't work." Anyway, so there's a game. There's an achievement called "Go Outside." Okay, and I will. Uh, and so the 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 achievement um, text says, "Don't play the Stanley Parable for five years." Um, so the the creator, Davy Redden. He sent out a tweet and said, I have the news you've all been waiting for. Today, and this was uh, October 17th, is the first day it is possible to legitimately get the Go Outside achievement in the Stanley Parable. It has been five years since it has launched. Now, granted, that means you had to have played it on launch day and then not, and then have turned it off since. Um, So, now... They they do caution you. Uh, you you can you can kind of look to see when you actually started this, but if you do launch it before the five year mark, your timer resets and you have to wait another five years. So <laughs> so if you didn't play it on launch day, you know try try and sneak around and look on Steam and tell you when the last time you've opened that game. Um, now granted. 
that's five years. And so, like, if you've changed, this is a Game Informer suggestion here. If you've changed your hardware in the last five years, that information might not be there about when you started this game last. So, super dicey. And I would be furious if I just missed out on my five year thing and it reset to another five years from now. But that is ridiculous. Anyway, um, that's not even the craziest achievement in here. Of course, you know, today is the first day, or, you know, the October 17th was the first, first day you could do it. Uh, that being said, I'm looking at truesteamachievements.com and there was, uh, you know, 1,600 gamers already have it because they just go into the console commands and they just edit the uh, the files and they fix it. And so that leads us to believe there's another achievement called unachievable, okay? And I've been poking around the guide on this one, and the flavor text says it is impossible to get this achievement. I'm like, well, yeah, but people are getting it. And so there's this conversation, and I've looked into the guide here, and it is, it is just silly, absolutely silly. Um, so there is a guide on how to do this, but... The uh, th- there's a, a walkthrough here posted by the Mute Gamer. It's linked into this True Steam Achievements page here, uh, and it, it essentially goes into the the achievement was set up, and Randy would love this. This is very much a Randy thing. Um, so it's called unachievable, but there is technically a way to get it. And what happens is if you go to you, you do the things in the game that you have to do. It's like go to this guy's cube and you try to turn on his computer, and when you do that. It generates a random number for you between 1 and 15. And and if that number is correct or it matches the criteria, then you get the achievement. So you have a 1 in 15 chance, and if it doesn't happen, then you just you miss your opportunity to get it. It's un- unobtainable. Uh, and so people are like, well, what the hell? That's stupid. So they said, okay, fine. We'll go into the config file and we'll change it. And, and just make it work and stuff. Well, the developers apparently knew about all this stuff, and so they've they've it's kind of this cat and mouse game between people trying to break the game uh, and mess around with the config files, and the developer putting in all these changes and fail safes to make it so you can't do that. And like, it's kind of clever. It's it's silly. It's fun. And so like, if you were inclined to do this, then I I could see how that would be fun, but. For those of us like myself, who's not necessarily very computer savvy, I'd be furious. Like, this sounds stupid. Um, well, yeah, I mean, imagine, like, the idea of an unobtainable achievement to us is is sacrilege, really, you know? Right. Uh, this is what happens when you have an unrestricted system. You know, here on Steam, you can have whatever achievements you want, and who the hell cares? And do, you know, there's no sort of... There's no curation at all. So no. Um, on one hand, you get creative, interesting, fun achievements like this game has. And on the other hand, you have terrible, awful, unobtainable achievements, essentially, like this game has. So it's like, yeah, OK, so you don't want to go into the Wild West of Steam achievements because uh, that way madness lies, you know? Um, right. It's kind of cool that there are people who have gone after these things and gotten the achievements. Um, but in a in a system in a closed system like the Xbox, you wouldn't be able to do that. So like, yeah, uh, you know, if it was an old Xbox 360 game and it was play the game five years after you started it, uh, you could easily manipulate the time. That wouldn't be a problem. You just get it offline. But with the newer achievements, that might be harder to do. And now, while that would be cool and super rare, it would also be terribly frustrating. And uh, especially if it was built in this same way, like you mentioned, if you if you opened the game four years and 364 days before. Right. Or after, and then you wouldn't get it at all. Yeah, no, that's terrible. That's that's not what we are looking for in achievements, and no. that's not what people who like achievements like to see. That's that's terrible and awful. So, and that like, I guess it'd be one thing if like if you solved the puzzle, then you would get it. Not like okay, you solved it. Now you have to wait. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. th- that's you know that, that's one of the reasons like I don't like. Um, you know, where, where like some some grinds are just so infuriating where it's like, okay, 
like I've I've executed this pattern for however long. Like now I'm just doing it now now I'm just doing it out of spite. Like this isn't fun, this is stupid. Like you know, we've we've talked about achievements that have just poorly poorly done. Um, you know, where they your best course of action is to just grind it out doing some menial task over and over and over for experience or gold or whatever. And it's like at this point, like you've demonstrated that you can complete the game, you've done all this stuff. Like, you there should be like a bypass, like a quick, you know, fast forward feature where it's like, oh, yep, you got it. All right, yep. And that's just simply just doing it, not not a battle of attrition. It's all right, you figured it out. Here you go. That's so stuff like this where it's like, oh, okay, yep. Wait five years, and then you can turn the game back on. Like, come on, really. Like that's just silly. Yeah, now, no sure, thanks. the dedication, fine. Maybe that's this. That seeing that achievement list is is just absolutely puts me off on even considering booting up games on my PC. <laughs> like, yep. Like just not have no interest at all. I will stick with my very user friendly, quote unquote user friendly, <laughs> uh, Microsoft uh, system ecosystem. Uh, hey, did you go, uh, do you have any Taco Bell yet? I have, in fact. I went yesterday, which I think was the first or second day of the promotion. Totally the first day. Um, so here's my review. Terrible. I love the $5 boxes on, on at Taco Bell. This may be okay. the worst one yet. Mm. Now, the steak, the cheesy steak burrito thing for me was the worst one. Cheesy steak burrito. I don't know if I remember that one. Yeah, I had one It just because I was wanted to try something new and it was a five dollar box uh it, the meat was a little chewy hmm. for uh for a steak burrito not not a fan um was it the I, quesarito I, maybe whatever because the quesarito yeah. was still much better than this now here's the thing Ooh, here's here's a little bit of my background here um mm-hmm. the number seven i think it is which is the the as actually two chalupas is one of my go-to gets at taco bell um but i always go with chicken Chicken okay. chalupas. And I think that's the big difference here, especially if you're going to get one big chalupa with the terrible... It is big. ...with the terrible D-grade beef that Taco Bell has. Um, it's not great. The actual food itself, not fantastic. Um, I would I would like to substitute. And you get a, a, a taco and then the cinnamon twists, twist. which are not great either. So I'm going to be a little bit less inclined to get it. I think I can't specifically remember. I think it was actually the Quesarito that was the Xbox promotion last year. And that was a decent get. That was a pretty, pretty good meal. Um, So I was more motivated to get it more frequently. Uh, But yeah, no, I didn't win. Surprisingly, I I also didn't win. I went today for lunch uh, and then I went kickboxing afterward. That was a disaster. Uh, That did not, (laughs) not go well for me. Um, okay, so my review, uh, the double chalupa, delicious. Okay. I got the spicy, put some jalapenos on there. Oh, man, it was fantastic. Of course, you can't go wrong with the hard shell taco. Like, that's just classic. Yes, you classic. can. Yes, you can. Soft shells for, uh, oh, you know what, actually, my God. it's funny. I had, I had tacos for dinner, too, uh, although they were homemade. Homemade chicken tacos versus the beef at, at lunch. I didn't tell my wife I went to Taco Bell. She'd be, she'd be <laughs> upset with me. Um... So I I enjoyed those things, and then cinnamon twists are literally packing peanuts covered in cinnamon sugar. Freem, uh, I have to tell you though, only Nazis that? like hard tacos. They make no oh. sense. They're chaotic. They just fall apart in your hand. They're the most useless things to eat in the world. Soft shell taco, nice. It's fluffy and inviting. No. And you can I just... need a crisp, man. I need a crunch. No, man, no. Yeah. Ugh. You know what? I, I I take my so for dinner tonight with my soft shell tacos. I put tortilla chips in them. To okay. Give me that crunch. You can have the crunch still. That's fair. Yeah. That's, fair. that's yeah, why that's the cheesy. Great. That's why the cheesy gordita crunch is still the best thing Taco Bell has ever had. Because you so, get the best of both worlds. Here's the other thing I had, and this I didn't even realize this was a thing. The the freezies. They uh, I, I upgraded my drink to the green apple freezy. Okay, this was pure heaven. <laughs> it was. If you've ever had those uh, caramel sour apple or even a sour apple like Jolly Rancher, the caramel apple uh, lollipops, 
this was just the Apple part of that. I mean, as artificial Apple as you can get, but oh, it was glorious. It was so glorious. Um, and so I will be doing that again at some point, maybe tomorrow. I, I don't know. We're celebrating my son's birthday tomorrow, so I, I'm not sure I have an opportunity. The reason we're talking so much about Taco Bell, well, they're doing the promotion, of course, the Xbox One promotion. Uh, and this is what you get, right? They're giving well, one every 10 minutes, apparently, about 5,000 Xboxes between October 18th and November 21st. So this is the Xbox One X Platinum Limited Edition Bundle. Okay, so what do you get? Well, it's a Taco Bell-branded Xbox One X, a white Elite wireless controller, three months of Xbox Game Pass, and Xbox Live Gold. And uh, and so th- so what? what is a, a Taco Bell-branded uh, taco, or a taco <laughs> Xbox? <laughs> so this is actually not what you might expect. It's not a Dorito orange... Nope. Xbox One X. It's actually yeah. quite tasteful. Um, it's a gradient Absolutely. based system. So it's 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 white to black, I think, or white to dark. Uh, and, you know, with a slight gradient uh, across it. And the really what and it's kind of interesting and fun is the the branding comes from the startup noise. Yes. Where instead of the, you know, uh, Xbox One chime in, you get the Taco Bell dong. <laughs> like I didn't even realize that was there still that was still the thing, but that's cool and that's super. That fun. is hilarious. I, I love that. Yeah, and that's exactly why I put it in here. The Taco Bell ring is your startup sound whenever you turn power onto your your Xbox. That's great. I know. I know there was the the Forza Horizon one that that console had a a an engine revving for the Forza Cla- the Forza Horizon Xbox One, uh, and so this one is the Taco Bell ring, which I think. I mean, I almost think subliminally if I if I heard that, I'd be like, Man, <laughs> my mouth would start watering. And it's like, I should go get some tacos. I know they're open. I mean, they're open late. So I'll go have fourth lunch or whatever they call it. So, I mean, X, Microsoft and, and in the Xbox brand, of course, have had this branding synergy with PepsiCo from, I mean, I, it probably goes before this, but the earliest I can remember it is the Halo 3 Codes. The Halo 3, oh, what was it called? Oh, shoot. What was the Halo 3 Mountain Dew called? Oh, Game Fuel? Game Fuel. Yes, thank yeah. you. Oh, man. Like, that's the earliest I can remember this sort of uh, a, a collaboration, I guess you'd call it. But it's great to see that this, this tradition continues to live on here in 2018. Right. Right. Um. All right. So let's shift into some more Xbox-related gaming-type news here. Well, it turns out, uh, so Microsoft's new initiative, or the initiative studio, that the Santa Monica-based uh, studio, uh, they've been uh, they've been they've been poaching talent in that area, uh, and one such person that they grabbed was Tom Shepard. Uh, and those of you who don't know who that is, which I didn't at the time, it was Rockstar Games' uh, technical director who they've uh, they've enticed to come work at the initiative. So I mean that's pretty exciting. I mean that's a that's a pretty high level position over at Rockstar to get uh, to get them to come over for the initiative. I'm very curious about what you know what they end up working on with just the level of talent they've started to poach uh, and try to entice to come over there. Hopefully getting all these people together has, you know, provided some a nice talent pool to come up with a really great uh, game. Now, what kind of a game? I mean, we we know the type of people that they're hiring is 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 that the type of game you're hoping for? It, where you know the the strong single player based, uh, large open world type, God God of War, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, like those are the type of people that they're 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 poaching. Do um, you want them to make something like that, or you want them to do something crazy and different and weird, or do you think Xbox needs their their big tentpole story driven single player game? Yeah, I don't know. This feels like we're uh, it feels like we're reading a lot into a little. Um, certainly, this is exciting, and and the possibilities, you know go through your mind very quickly and like, Oh man, it could be awesome, but it's, it's too soon to tell. We won't see any sort of 
results from this for years and years and years. Um, I don't know. It feels all speculative at this point. It's exciting to see these sort of, uh, uh, you know, acquisitions and, and, and getting these people involved. It's just so, it feels so abstract and so far down the line that it kind of seems pointless to really guess what they're trying to do. Yeah. And I don't think, yeah, I wasn't expecting you to, to, to really give me a, a good answer, but. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, by the way, can I, I have to what? mention this real quick. Shoot. I was playing Loco Cycle. Yeah. And uh, I recognized one of the actors in the live action sequences. Okay. I said, how do I know that face? I know that face and I know the hair specifically. Oh my God, that's James Gunn. And it, oh, really? And James <laughs> Gunn is an actor. He plays a character in Local Cycle. If you're not aware of who James Gunn is, he uh, recently was fired from his position as the director uh, of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, the Marvel movies. And apparently uh, now he's doing the sequel to Suicide Squad. Apparently, which is, that's a whole other kind of worms we don't need to get into. But it was amazing to see him. I mean, this is well before he was a, you know, a triple A uh, movie director. Uh, so it was amazing. It was just so I was floored and flabbergasted to see that. So, uh, Hey, look, it takes all kinds and, uh, you know, who knows what's going to be the next big thing is I, I mm -hmm. guess my point. So that is interesting. Um, the last thing I want to touch on here is, uh, is this tweet. And I just, I, I thought it was interesting and worth a discussion. Uh, so Jeff Minter, uh, he's a game developer. Uh, you might, so his his most well known games, um, kind of recently, Tempest two thousand, Polybius, are some of his bigger Grid Runner. I, I don't know many of these games. He's he's worked a lot on like old older games, you know, like like stuff before I was even born, uh, and I'm old. So anyway, uh, it, but he had an interesting tweet, and and it it just kind of got me thinking. And he says, hey. Developers, instead of relying on sales to shift your games, simply increase the price every month so people aren't inclined to wait on ha and hanging on until they get a price drop. And I thought, I mean, I, that literally is what I do, where like I'll see this game come out and I'll say, wow, that looks really interesting. I, I'm going to put that on my list. I'm really excited. To, I'd be excited to play that. But. I'll just I'll you know I'll wait till it's half off because I got so many other games to play so there's there's really no point, um, you know think of Ubisoft games but yeah I don't I don't need to play that right now I, six weeks from now I can buy it for forty bucks three months from now I can buy it for twenty you know thirty maybe whatever, um, just because that's how the industry goes, and and this kind of. It seems an interesting perspective on, well, yeah, you know, if you are excited about a game and you want to play it right away, then you've been obviously likely following the development and you, you know, want to give the money to the developers. So why not? I mean, and a lot of companies are offering a discount on, on pre-orders and or... Uh, you know, week of releases. I know a lot of the ID at Xbox games have a 10 or 20% off if you buy it the week of release. Um, I know I did that with Brawl Out. I've done that with uh, like Hollow Knight I bought day one. And so, you know, I had a discount for that. And, and, and so that's certainly an incentive. And of course, Amazon and Best Buy and those guys, they'll, they'll give you $10 off if you, if you pre-order. Uh, certainly for the bigger games, it doesn't quite work for the the little digital guys. Uh, but then after that, it goes, it, it, it j jacks up to normal price, and then it just hangs out at normal price until the inevitable sale comes by. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of like Nier Automata for me right now. I, that's going to be on sale around Thanksgiving and or the Christmas sale. I'm sure it is. And so I'm just going to wait, and when that's 50% off, I'm going to buy it. And so... Because I know that that's inevitable, I can sit on my money and wait. I have no really impetus unless I feel like, I, well, I just need to play this right now. I don't really have any need to, to go out and buy these things day one. But if the industry as a whole said, okay, listen, w when we launch a game, it's going to be at 60%. 
and then after the first week it's going to go up to 75 percent and then after three you know or whatever and then at you know after x many weeks it'll be at 100 percent, and then it's just going to stay at 100 percent. what that would do to sales and 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 people buying and um you know would that change the 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 industry in such a way that you could continue to reward developers more and they don't you know because as of now they're they launch and people are excited to spend their money and then they feel compelled to discount the product so they can move more units because they need it they need the the the, the user base to build and so they end up taking a hit just to try and ship a few more units but everybody's done that and so they've trained people to just wait on these sales um so Prue, what do you think i mean do you do you think it i don't think it's feasible to actually do this i don't think you can coordinate across the industry to to do this because then someone would just say well i'm just going to do it the other way then and people think and then i'll offer a sale later but conceptually uh do you do you think that this could work if 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 they all got together and said let's do an escalating price and so we reward the people who follow from development and get in on it early and then the others who hear about it word of mouth down the road you know then ever all their friends are playing it and so if they want to partake well they got to pay a little bit more but their friends are already telling them it's awesome so would they be you know <laughs> no this what do you think? i i'm i am no uh, economist uh, and certainly no, you know, game expert, but this seems exactly opposite of anything that makes any sort of feasible sense. Um, in terms of what? In terms of it, it actually working or in terms of that you couldn't coordinate to get this, to, to do this? I don't think it would ever work. I mean, I mean, I guess what you're suggesting is that if everybody did this at the same time, it might be effective. Um, what I'm suggest- what I'm saying is if all of the developers said, listen, just like just like how uh, you know iTunes started by saying, okay, if you're gonna use my launcher, I'm gonna take thirty percent of your money. So now industry standard is thirty percent of uh, every transaction goes to whatever launch service you get. So the Windows Store, they take thirty percent. Steam, thirty percent. Uh, Bethesda launcher, well, it's their games, but if they had a third party, it'd be 30%. And so people just adopted 30% because that's just what Apple started with. And so, oh, well, we can shift that and entice you to come and launch with us. How about we only take 20%? So you as a developer get 80% of your, right? And so then people will be more inclined to sell through that. Now, granted, it's a small user base, but that would be an inclination to do that. It's it's This m- setup was was essentially created as a okay re- retail price of a game is sixty dollars and you know that has yet to change i mean it's been that way for a while you know granted it was fifty dollars earlier but once it jacked up to 60 then we really haven't changed the price at all and so what if they said you know because now it's sixty dollars is a big pill to swallow for a lot of people so what if it was the sale price early to get people on the front end? No, everything everything feels wrong about this sort of model. You're entirely it, it's it feels anti-consumerist to me, like entirely. Uh, what you would do is you'd have developers releasing something like um, Xbox early access program games early on for twenty dollars. And it, I, I just I actually don't feasibly understand an actual model that would make sense from this because competition drives prices down, not up. So there's no reason, there's no pathway for this to make any sort of sense. This seems stupid to me. Like, I don't know, like maybe I'm dumb and I don't get what he's trying to suggest, but this idea seems entirely counterintuitive. One, like you mentioned, unless every single developer is on board, one or two, you know, rogue developers going against the grain would turn everything on its head the game prices don't inflate uh forever because they they would obviously collapse in on themselves and that's why sales are a a way to sort of counteract that i don't know what this seems i don't know this guy just i don't know if he doesn't understand basic economics but this doesn't no i i think it's i think it's different i think you have to consider it like 
like a like a like a wine, a fine wine, right? <laughs> okay. That that as that as that ages, it gets better. That it's more interesting. It's it's more rare. It's harder to find. And whatever you know, the 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 alcohol content shifts. The taste is better. Um, you know. So the idea is, if you're uh, if you're one of the the people on the inside track, and you know this game is going to be good. Well, we're gonna we're gonna let you be on the forefront, and we're gonna give you this this great discount on the front end because you guys follow us as a developer. You're our true fans. We really appreciate that, and so and we're gonna rely on you to spread the word of our game. So your first your first run of people they get it at a at a at a discount, and then as they create buzz and say, "Oh my god, you guys got to play this game. It is so much fun." Then it's like, okay. You missed out on the, quote, you know, the early window, and so uh, yeah, you know, it's climbed up ten percent. But man, it's so worth your time because you you got to get in on this now because it's going to go up again. You know, it's going to go up, so get in on it now before it, before the price increases, because this game is so much fun. And then you get the next tier of people, and they say, well, yeah, but I got like five buddies who are playing this. I don't, I'm not playing this yet. Well, it has gone up another 10% since, but man, we're all playing this game right now. You got to get in on this. And and it just kind of escalates a bit on the front end there to reward the people who follow and and, and, no, that, that and makes create, no sense. A, create a buzz that makes, uh, around the game. That makes no sense. Like if you mentioned wine earlier, which which actually gains a an actual advantage it has a, a a discernible quantifiable uh, gain over time games do right. not get that in fact they probably uh, lessen over time because of competition because of shifting trends and all that sort of thing like this makes no sense for the gaming industry this is a stupid model for the gaming i just i feel like this is so dumb on its face that i can't believe that it's even a concept that we need to talk about it seems so silly to me no, it's well. Here's here, here's another counter example. Then, multiplayer games. Okay. If it if it was less expensive on the front end, that you could get a larger starting player base to make the multiplayer more interesting. That that would be better for the game, and so by offering it a discount on the front end and encouraging people to get in and play, and then as that multiplayer mode began to get some traction, then the price increased, kind of like an early access thing. You know, hey, you know, you're, you're going to pay a discount on the front end, and as this thing builds up steam, you know, you'll have an inside track, uh, and then we're going to end up charging other people more because, you know, you guys already know how awesome we are as a developer, uh, and so we're going to reward you for that. I mean, it's like, it's like the pre-order thing. You know, that's why they give you a, a discount on pre-ordering, is because they want your money earlier because that is new liquid money that they can do stuff with. And it's like it's like giving Amazon or Best Buy or whoever a loan uh for 50 bucks because they get to sit on your 50 bucks until um you know th- they know they've got your 50 bucks and and they can they can bank on that versus waiting for the hopefully $60 that they don't have visibility on. So the idea is, you know, to encourage pre-orders, you offer the discount. And so for these independent developers, they could do the same thing and say, hey, get in our pre-order thing so we know our launch quantities. And uh, and they could even scale it. They say, listen, if we hit this many pre-orders, it'll be a 5% discount. We hit this, it'll be 10. This, it'll be 15. Boy, if we get a million people pre-ordering, We'll discount it thirty five percent or whatever, and then that 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 discount window will last for a week or two, uh, so you can get in on it, and then it's going to go up to full price, or it's going to it's going to escalate as it moves down the road. I think eventually it will have to go on sale. Well, that's the thing, and that's that's exactly the point. Beyond beyond that, it's it's six it's months. You're looking game. at a way deeper discount than you would have ever gotten any ad- advantageous perspective on at that point so why even bother it's it's to change people's buying models well right and i think it's to i mean how this... many games how many games do you buy full price nowadays uh, oh god three a year four a year maybe yeah, yeah. right 
me, I'm probably the same. Like, and mine have been indie titles. Like, Dead Cells, Hollow Knight, Brawl Out. I think those are the only three games I've paid full price on this year. Um, maybe Red Dead. But I doubt it. I think I'm waiting on Red Dead. So, like, those, that's it. Everything else, like the other games I'm really excited about, yeah, I'm waiting. I know I know there's a big sale on Thanksgiving, and I know there's a big sale at the, at, at the countdown to New Year's. And I... Pretty darn sure. Uh, I'll be spending a ton of money on those sales, and I've I've bought a bunch of games on the weekly sales. Like I am so excited for Monday nights. Like that's just awesome. I'm just excited to see what comes up. Um, you know, I just I bought Yoku's Island recently, forty oh, percent off. That's a good game, right? You guys talked about how awesome it was. Yeah. I knew I, I knew I wanted to play it. Forty percent off. I gave him twelve bucks instead of twenty. Like, you know. Why? Why could I? Why? Why did I wait? I mean, to, to tell you the truth, I probably could have waited till Christmas, and it would have been fifty percent off. Uh, just because I know inevitably it'll get to that. So if I if I knew that they wouldn't go on sale, like Nintendo's games don't go on sale really. No, they don't. They rarely go on sale. So if you know, like my my son wants a bunch of Switch games for his birthday. And it's like, holy crap, I found Mario Odyssey for $48. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy crap, like that, saving 12 bucks on a Nintendo game, that's insane. I got to get in on that. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I can go buy for 20 bucks right now. Yep. That's, a, that's $40 off. Yep. Like, you know, and the games have been out the same amount of time. And, to, and, and for uh, two years from now, I bet Mario Odyssey will still be hovering around $50. Yet, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I will likely have seen that. If it's not games with gold by that point, I will have seen it for likely $10 to $15. Yep. You're absolutely right. And that's why this this guy's idea is never going to work. It doesn't make any sort of sense. Like, it's the most advantageous thing for developers to do, but it just doesn't work in real-world circumstances, you know? When you have it's, competition to that level, you're never going to be able to shift it like like literally 180 degrees on its head. Yeah. So it's, I guess it's, I mean, hypothetically, theoretically, it's a good idea for developers, question mark. But, um, you know, reality is going to hit you in your face. And if you start increasing your prices right after launch, I mean, remember when uh, the Artifacts Monday games started becoming yep. more expensive? Oh, yeah. People are pissed. Yeah. Like, that's not a thing that's going to work well in your favor. It's just not. So now. Uh, all right. Let's let me talk. And I don't know if you know how this works or not, whatnot, because like the only way for it to work is if everybody was on board. Right. And so that would mean they'd have to have an agreement in place between all developers is that collusion? Is that like is that illegal to do that? Like if all the developers said, "Listen, this is what we're doing from now on," would that be collusion? And if it would, could they then send out like a like the, they make like a collective? We are the game developers collective, and this is our new decree from this day on. And and you know they 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 make this big manifesto. That, you know they tell everybody in the world. This is how our game, our model is going to be. We will not be discounting our games for two years. Um, and so if you want to play, our discount will be on the front end. It will climb up to full price after one month. And from one month to two years, it will remain at full price. And after two years, then all developers are free to discount however they want. Like if they just set that as a global decree from this games developers consortium <laughs> does that does that negate any sort of illegality or collusion well, or here's the ta- thing. you know and and this is why we'll never see this happen frame you have that sort of situation with ISPs here in America you have this sure. sort of yep. oh buy in low and we'll increase your price as time goes on without you even knowing or being aware or even if you are there's jack all you can do about it <laughs> yeah, and this is true. why this will never work in the games industry because the games industry is actually distributed. It's actually there's there's a lot of competition and it's very competitive. You're not going to have that sort of system in place where you can 
strong arm the consumers. The consumers are the, are, right now are the ones that have the power. And yeah. the more developers, the more the consumers are, are, are uh, you know, empowered by this. So, no, no, this is why this is a stupid idea initially, but it's also impossible to actually go through with because even if Rockstar signed on and Treyarch signed on and EA signed on, it doesn't matter because there's 30,000 other developers that are not going to be like, no, I, I will give my game out for $10 when I first release it. And then it's going to go on sale for $2 in two months. Yeah. And the, then you're going to have $2 guys, you know, the $2 game people who are like, yeah, go ahead and have my game on sale right now. And the $60 guys who were like, yeah, my game was $40 two months ago, but you still have to pay $60 now. No, no. It, the, the, this is the, the 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 best aspects of the the, the free market where you actually have competition which forces yeah. these people not to include these sort of crazy ideas where it's like no no, no how do we take most advantage of these people you know yeah i you know i suppose i, I don't feel like it's necessarily taking advantage but you're absolutely right it is I mean, it it does it it is anti capitalism, which is is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? You know, I, I don't know. You know, yes, I don't want all video game makers to join a consortium and price fix. Like that sounds awful. Like I hate Comcast because of it. Like that's a great that's a great analogy. I didn't even you know of, of tying it to to how awful our ISPs are. Uh, because that's why, you know, because then ultimately, yeah, likely the games are going to suffer because they're like, well, this is how it's going to be. So, you know, we'll we'll release a buggy mess on the front end uh, when it's cheap and then we'll patch it in at about a month in when it's at full price and the game actually works at that point. Like, I totally could see that happening because that's what they do now. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. like, hey, you know what? Could you just be our, like, it's not our beta because we're actually launching the game, but it's like, it's like a, it's kind of like a, a hard beta. And so, you know, when it's broken, like, we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a day one patch that's mostly going to fix it. And then we'll get like a day seven patch. Well, that's the thing. Which... <laughs> it would turn, it would turn the alpha program games into full retail games. You would literally be paying less or you'd be paying more, excuse me, for a less superior, or a less quality game. You would have less to show for your money. And then as the game got patched and goes on, you would regret your decision even more, but there would be nothing you could do about it. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, again, this, to be fair to this guy who actually tweeted this out, he very specifically and very, um, exuberantly says developers, like this is a very developer centric idea. Yeah. It's not a consumer centric idea. This does not work well in the current marketplace and i wouldn't like the marketplace that would exist if this idea did work so that's just i mean that's my personal opinion you know maybe no, maybe people disagree to, to be but. fair to jeff minter i i mean i i i obviously just clipped that one tweet he said he went into his his detail more about like how it wouldn't work that it i mean it's it's not a legitimate idea he has but I mean, it's kind of one of those fairy tale land things from his standpoint, who is a developer that, you know, he thinks, well, look, yes, we get so much of our money on the first week of sales. And, you know, that's mostly where games make their hay is that first month worth of, of buy. And so, yeah, you want to maximize that by having it your most expensive time um, when most of the people are buying it and you're in the mind's eye, it's a launched game. People are excited about it. So yes, you want to have your highest price at that point. And then when, you know, that steam has died down and, and people are less familiar with the game or it hasn't picked up or people start moving on to other games, then you entice them with a price break and say, Hey, do you remember this game? You know, maybe you're interested about a month ago, but now it's twenty percent off. What do you think? Hmm. Uh, you know, and that's it's exactly how we behave now, where it's like, oh yeah, I've heard a lot of great. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Near Automata because what it was just at thirty percent off, 
and I passed on it. Maybe it was forty percent off, and I passed. But it's like I've heard so much good good things about that game. I very much want to buy that game. Um, and but but I know the time commitment. I know I want to get to play it right away, and so it's like, well, eh, you know, I'm at a position as a consumer that I can wait until there's a big sale. Now, that being said, there is something uh, of value in supporting developers you like, right? So, you know, uh, Motion Twin, the people of Dead Cells, like I, I told a co-worker today uh, that Dead Cells has, has quickly become one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, whether it's going to stay there, I don't know. Uh, but as it stands right now, I absolutely love that game, and I think it's fantastic. And I would be willing to, you know, pay day one for another, for whatever Motion Twin's next project is, um, you know, if it's something that interests me, based on how much I like Dead Cells. So it's like, I would love to support that developer. So, yes, I'd be happy to give them money for their, their work because I've, I've liked what they've put forth so far. CD Projekt Red, right? People mm-hmm. are just, they're so ready to throw huge amounts of money at Cyberpunk. I'm sure the pre-orders for that are astronomical right now. Um, where, you know, there's news out there about, I, I, I don't, you know, other other games and their preload or their their pre-orders are down. And, you know, I don't know what, what Red Dead's pre-orders look like. I don't know what Call of Duty's were. I don't know what Battlefield's are. But, like, some of those where it's like, you know, maybe your Call of Duty and your, your Battlefield, you, you kind of know what you're going to get. And so you're like, well... Yeah, you know, you got EA, really? You want me to give you money before? Because remember when I did that for Star Wars Battlefront 2 and you, you know, <laughs> exactly. Spanked me with microtransactions exactly. like that. Yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not too keen on giving you money before. Well, I want to see the game first. You show me that you're it's worth my while. Whereas, you know, other developers who have convinced you like, you know what? Hey, Prue, trust us. We're CD Projekt Red, man. We're never going to do you wrong, buddy. <laughs> Give us the full 60. Hey, you know what? Why don't you pre-order that season pass, too, while you're at it? You say, oh, yeah. Listen, for sure, I'm all about that cyberpunk. A rock star, you guys have not, you know... I'm, I'm so pumped for Red Dead, and I'd be willing to give you my 80 for game and season pass. That's probably 100. Whatever. Anyway... Oh, interesting discussion, Peru. Yeah, it's, it's you know, we've had, this is a, a several different varieties of, of flavor that we've had this conversation of because just the, the industry is, is sh- constantly shifting and changing. There's no right way to do things. And it's it, it's just, there's so much, so much out there now. How do you handle it? Who does it right? Who doesn't? It, this is going to be a, a dynamic industry you know from now until the end of time it feels like but yeah. certainly for the next few years it's it's just i don't know maybe we'll never never excuse me maybe we will never settle in to a convenient easy groove to understand and maybe that's just always going to be how much are you willing to pay versus how much are you willing to play sort of thing i'm really interested in what the you know i, I don't know if we'll ever get these numbers but like uh, Call of Duty's, you know, Black Ops Four, that their battle royale mode. Because I mean, I, if I've watched some of it on on uh, Mixer and stuff, and it looks fun as hell, and and like it, it's like PUBG, only it's got Call of Duty's motion feel, snappiness, like a well polished first person shooter. Um, you know, so I could see it beating the crap out of PUBG, although, you know, that's a little bit more realistic. Maybe maybe that's a different crowd. I don't know. I I haven't really played much of it. But in comparison to Fortnite, like, how how can... How is Blackout Mode going to compare to Fortnite, which is free? Like, (laughs) Fortnite is free. You know, yeah, you you pay for your cosmetics, you pay for your V-Bucks, whatnot... You got to pay sixty bucks to get in to blackout mode, right now, now. Now, right, and so like I'm very curious how that is going to impact the success of of that mode because by all by all accounts, it's people are loving it. 
I mean, like Twitter is a buzz. Mixer, you know, let, I mean, let's just look right now at what uh, what the, the the channel watching is. Um, I'll go I'll go to Mixer and we'll see we'll see what seven thousand people in uh, in Black Ops Four and Fortnite's half of that, thirty three hundred. Like, you know, that's that's pretty significant. Yeah. Um. So, and I, I guess I mean I could even look at Twitch and stuff and see where that goes. But what can is that sustainable? Can I mean I know it's brand spanking new. Is Fortnite worried? I mean they're free and they can appeal to a younger group. Um, you know, because, because it's cartoony and it's less scary, you know, I mean, Call of Duty, that's an M rated game. Now, granted, I've seen plenty of 12 year olds playing Call of Duty, but they probably shouldn't. Fortnite won't um, be on top forever. No, no, uh, no, it definitely won't. But so yes, they should be worried. I don't think, uh, I don't think Call of Duty is going to do it. But Who because, knows? We'll see. We never would have guessed Fortnite would have been the number one game in the world for this long. So who knows? That is funny. I mean, I, I do remember distinctly saying, I don't see how Fortnite can pass PUBG. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, uh, that was dumb. Uh, anyway, great. Fantastic. Well, Peru, it looks like it was just you and me this evening. Um, Great conversations. I'm excited to uh, to get my Conan Exiles. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that tonight. Even yeah, do we'll it. It's long, quick. How, how long the download takes? It's quick and I easy. Do do that and play some bingo. I'm at nine thousand one hundred and ninety nine achievements. So I will hit ninety two hundred here soon. And I'm close. I I don't think I get to ten thousand. Um, how long do you think it would take to get eight hundred achievements? You can check about, that out. I get about a, I get about a hundred a month, so I guess eight months. That seems like a lot. Ugh. Am I really? How many achievements have I got so far this year? Let's look all of 2018 so far. I have got 1,300 achievements. Yeah, about about eight months. I just hit a milestone today. What was your milestone? Of uh, let me double check. Was it not today? Was it yesterday? Yes, it was yesterday. I w- I'm on a 10,500 achievement win streak. Oh, mercy. Yeah. That was, That's a lot. Yeah. It was basically... How long is that? That was... I think I'm just... Oh, God. Let me check. How long is my streak? 962 days. Okay. So three years-ish. Ish. Not Man, quite. What did I do? Do in yet. September. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, UHH. Um, yes, as I was looking, I was like, you know, June, I got 91 achievements. July, 73. You know, I was traveling a lot. I didn't have a lot of a lot of free time on that. August, okay, we got up to 100, which is about my average, about 100 per month. And then September, 177. Ooh, nice. Holy crap, that's a lot. A lot of Plague Inc. And I, I that's all UHH stuff. Like I just scored a bunch in UHH. And so far in October, I'm at uh, 80 achievements already. Halfway through, well, two thirds through the month. So about 100, 100 a month. Man, 10,000 seems, <laughs> doesn't seem that far away from 9,200. But when you say that, that seems pretty significant. Let's wrap up. I guess I got achievements to go get. Let's do um, it. <laughs> so that'll be it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. I hope you've had some fun. We definitely had some fun, the two of us. Um, you know, uh, again, like I mentioned this, so you've listened to our fifth show uh, that uh, in our wrap-up farewell tour. We have four shows remaining. Uh, thanks again to everybody who supported us and, and continued along with us. Um, we are still doing active contests over on our forums, forum.zz.com. Uh, we got the, the, the Gamer Tag Challenge each month. We have a community challenge this month. Go to the forums, check it out. There are prizes to give away. We've calculated it out. I, bought a, I got about a year's worth of giveaways uh, left, or so it seems. 
Um, I may have to shift some things around to to stretch it out a little bit more, but well, you know, we'll see where we can go with with all the money that we've saved up from uh, your amazing Patreon donations. Uh, of course, we don't have a Patreon active right now um, that has been suspended and canceled because the show is ending after episode one hundred and fifty. Uh, so, but if you still want to get a hold of us, we're around. We're hanging out. Uh, you know, you can get uh, the show. Of course, we'll continue to follow at Z Z Z E D T O Z E D over at for, uh, at Twitter. We still have our email contact at ZZ.com. dot uh, com. Peru, I mean, if if people want to start tracking you down, uh, where where should they go? They can find me on Twitter at One Up Dan. That's the number one, not the word. Fantastic, and I'm Freemhole, uh, F R E A M W H O L E. Uh, you know, I I find it hard to believe that I will not continue to talk into a microphone for some type of thing uh, after the show ends. I just I can't help myself. I love to hear the sound of my own voice, and I'm a huge narcissist who wants to nothing else than to be famous. That's not true, but I do enjoy <laughs> talking, and so uh, you know whether that's some type of streaming type thing or hosting a web show or cr- joining a new podcast. I don't even know, um, but it'll be nice to take a break and and leave all of this stuff behind. But hey, join me up on Twitter. Follow me on uh, True Achievements. You know, I got a lot of fun ideas over for that community. Uh, so you won't hear. You haven't heard the last of me, uh, and you certainly haven't heard the last if you continue to stick through the last four shows. So I want to thank everybody who made this show possible. On behalf of Pru, I have been Brandon, and to all of you achievement hunters and gamer score junkies out there, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next episode. See you later.